Morning guys, Michael with Juggernaut Wells Vab. Um, you know, usually we're in the shop working on some real fancy, cool turbo kits or roll cages or something race car related or plasma table related, whatever, what have you. But really what built my business and the main bread and butter of my business is the mobile repair, okay? Um, this is what I do. You know, like I said, this is probably about 75% of my business right here is the mobile side of it. Um, I'm at a real good customer of mine's ever as recycling. Today, we're going to be hard facing their grapple, uh, the grapple tips. I come out here about every four months and three to four months and uh, hard face their resurface their tips for them. Um, what that does is allows this tip to last a lot longer, um, which is more cost effective than chopping it off and, and welding on new tips every time. So what that entails is me, we're, we're gonna be grinding off all the ho old hard face material that I put on here the last time, getting it down to bare metal. We're gonna preheat these each tip before we weld it, and then we're gonna reshape the tips of these clean them up and then we'll go ahead and put some more hard surfacing material on top of that we're going to use ranite d today um, there's multiple different hard surfacing rods out there uh, ranite d is something i can pick up locally and honestly it it is hard as hell um, it they've got uh they've got one alloy that is meant for metal on metal contact and one that's meant for metal on dirt um, so we're obviously at a scrap yard, so we're working with metal on metal. Um, so we'll be using the Ranite D rod today. So we'll, we'll go over this. Like I said, it's a little different than some of the stuff you guys see me doing, but, uh, there's other guys out there that are doing the same exact thing as this and, and, or just getting into it. And maybe you haven't actually hard faced any hard surfaced anything yet. And, uh, you want to know the ins and outs of it. So stay tuned. So again here, uh, all we're trying to do is get this, put my microphone back on. All we're trying to do is get down, uh, we're gonna take down the old hard face that we put on here, get that cleaned up till we're at fresh material. We're gonna take the tips that are worn, we're gonna take that all the way down to parent material get that cleaned up real nice we'll go over the whole thing with a wire wheel and then uh, we'll preheat it I'm gonna get the suitcase out and we'll go ahead and build these tips back up with just mild steel filler wire we'll uh, run ER 70 s2 for this stuff um, get this nice and blocked out and then we'll go ahead and hit the whole thing with some hard face again Okay, so you guys can see, got these tips all cleaned up, got them down to parent material. That is what we want. Now that we've got those things ground down uh, to the base metal, We'll go ahead and start getting our suitcase welder and gas set up and start building these things up. Um, get the weed burner. I just use a weed burning torch with a propane bottle, small propane bottle. Get these up to about 250 degrees and uh, start welding them. Uh, and the reasoning behind that is that these are hardened steel tips. Okay, they've got a temper to them. So you go weld on these cold, you know, it's probably 45 degrees out right now, but if you go weld on these things cold, they are gonna crack and chip and break away. So it's very important to follow through uh, with the proper procedure. That's everything. I had a customer call me one time and he says, hey, can you have, you got a kid or something you can just send out here to hard face my equipment? Uh, he said, oh, it's, you know, it's just going to be mindless work, so you can just send anybody out if, if you got a teenage kid at home or whatever. And uh, needless to say, I didn't do any work for that guy, because if you think that this is mindless work, um, honestly, that's an insult to me, insult to what I do. 
and uh, I like to consider myself a professional sometimes. <laughs> uh, no, I like to consider myself a professional, so um, there is a process to hard facing uh, equipment. And again, this is going to increase the longevity of the life of this equipment tremendously, which, you know, having me come out, you know, three to four times a year to do this is a lot cheaper than having to replace equipment. So let's get to it again. Our suitcase drag out. I'm hoping to be able to replace this Miller ABS suitcase with an Everlast here soon. Um, that's all I run in the shop is Everlast. And, you know, this motor's done me good, yeah, but uh, I want to get that new Hurricane. It's got the plasma cutter, uh, MIG and TIG, ACDC TIG all in one. And man, that'd be a game changer for me to not have to carry around so much equipment. And like I said, sorry about the noise, it's big Commander 500, that big bastard's loud. If you're not in it for love. I'll drag out our gas here. Be running C25 gas with again a solid core uh, ER70 S2 wire. Um, get these bad boys built up. Then, once I get all this set up, I'll go ahead and uh, start getting each tip heated up. Uh, obviously, you only want to preheat one at a time. So, um, Preheat it and get the weld on it as quickly as you can to maintain that temperature. Oh, wait. You guys haven't seen my moves yet. Yep. So, with these wire feeders, it's, uh, I guess, kind of like MIG, but but uh, it is not. And it, it is still sh short circuit, but you can either run constant voltage or constant current. My machine is set up with a switch uh, to where I can run constant voltage um, and set it up specifically for a wire feeder. Some of the more basic machines, you're only going to have your amperage control and your stick lead. So you can set this up as a constant current uh, wire feeder as well and um, run it that way. So what I generally do when I finish up a job, if I can find my milker pliers. Oh, here we go. What I usually do when I finish a job up is I'll just clip my wire and uh, leave the wire in the, in the whip. You could do it. You could drag it all out, I guess if you weren't lazy like me. But what we're going to do here, get this old wire yanked out of that. And how the suitcase is going to work is you've got your, your ground or your negative off of the machine, your work clamp off of the machine, off the stick leads. You're going to have that grounded to your material and then your hot, your positive terminal is gonna hook up to the back of this machine and feed amperage directly through the stick outputs. And then you've got a voltage sensing ground it's called and this has gotta be hooked up to your work clamp in order for this machine to work. And then we just ad adjust amperage at the machine and all you're doing with this is adjusting wire speed up and down and it's completing the circuit so we've got our hot lead so 
Put that in. We've got our gas hooked up. Um, we'll definitely don't want to get your fingers caught in that bad boy. We also hard face this shear. That thing will cut through eye beams like nothing. How you like to peel that lobster claw? All right, guys. So I've got my whole mess of spaghetti laid out here. We've got our wire feeder hooked up. We've got our ground, our work clamp hooked up along with our voltage sensing ground from the machine. We're going to go ahead and put the commander on CV wire mode. And now this is a very important, uh, it's, it's a very important step. Make sure the power or the batteries are disconnected anytime you're welding on a piece of equipment like this. A lot of the ECUs are run off a five volt system, six volt system, and uh, they're, they're very sensitive to, to voltage, obviously, to stray voltage. So it's good practice just to kill the batteries. Uh, every piece of equipment has a battery shutoff switch. Go kill that bad boy and uh, we'll be ready to get at it. We're going to be building up these tips again. I'll show you guys before and after. Um, hang out. Stay tuned for some of more of my dance moves and maybe I'll sing to you. I don't know. Something. I got to be good at something. Well, alrighty then. We've got our tips built up with our ER70S6. Uh, it's actually ER70S2 filler wire. And you could do that with 7018 if you wanted to, but to sit there and have to chip the flux and all that crap each pass, I'd rather just run a pass, wire wheel it, run a pass, wire wheel it. Um, what I do is I hop around, I'll do one pass here, then jump to the next, jump to the next, jump to the next, and that helps not to overheat it and to kind of keep everything the same temperature. Um, now what I'll do is I'll take my grinder and a flap disc. I'm going to square these off nice like they come from the factory. We'll square them off real nice, and then we'll run our hard face on here, okay? Um, I guess I'm over here squinting, and I have sunglasses on my head never said i was the smartest guy in the world though um so yeah uh i know it's a lot of information and it's kind of time consuming but it is a necessary process and there are a ton of people out there that need it whether it's excavation companies or scrap yards if you're a mobile welder out there just striking out on your own um check with those guys and see you know um it's it's something that has to be done, you know, three to four times a year, generally, depending on the wear. I come out here and check the wear every month. Once I start using a new rod, I'll come out here every month and check the wear. And uh, that's kind of how I gauge how often I need to come out. So, like I said, this is usually three times a year I come out and do this. Uh, I, if they're super slammed, it'll be four times. But anyhow. All right, guys. Hey, real quick, guys. Um, I wanted to take a second. I always shout out the companies that take care of me and that their products actually work and last and their customer support uh, is backed up by that. Um, you know, Edge Welding Station, Eric, those guys take care of me over there and uh, make a killer product. I want to give them props. And if you're looking for any welding supplies, hit those guys up. Um, hopefully we'll have some of their products on our website soon. Uh, STV CNC, looking for a plasma table, hit those guys up. I would not run anything else ever again in my life because their product support is so amazing. 
Everlast Welders, again, I, I can't even rate those three uh, because they are all that badass. When it comes to customer support, warranty, um, troubleshooting, I mean, it, it, it's just, there's no question about it. I'm gonna add one on there. Um, I usually use all 3M products, 3M Cubitron flap disc, and with inflation and everything, prices have gotten outrageous. Uh, for I think for one Cubitron the other day at the local welding supply place, it was $15 for one disc. And so I ordered some of these, I always see this benchmark abrasives on Facebook, and I thought, man, for the price, it's not gonna be worth it. But I went ahead and ordered a pack anyway, and um, I tell you what, for the price of these flap discs, they last and they get with it, man. Uh, they, they'll they take off some material in a hurry. I'm really impressed and I'll definitely be ordering more of their products from now on. Um, I can't speak to the stones and the cutoff wheels. Um, I can't speak on those because I, I didn't buy any of them, but I can say the flap discs are pretty bitching. So just a quick little, uh, you know, share that with with other tradesmen because you know you're saving 60 percent on a flap disc you can pass that down to the customer the savings so so we're ready to apply our hard surfacing or hard face uh this is the product i was telling you about made by rankin industries ranite d um it comes in different diameters uh the larger diameter the better when it comes to hard face uh, this stuff's a lot different than studi rod uh, studi rod burns almost like stainless a stainless rod does real butter smooth and has a nice appearance appearance this stuff is ugly as hell um, it is ugly as hell you're going for more it's almost like brazing you're just wanting to heat the surface of that material enough uh, for the, the rod to stick and stand up on it. Um, you're not trying to mix this rod with the parent material. So you're just going to run beads. It, it doesn't it doesn't have a really high profile like Studi does, uh, but it does wear really well, surprisingly. Just like I promised you guys, <clears throat> that's hard facing in a, in a nutshell. That is my version of it. Everybody has their own opinions and all that good stuff. If you don't have anything positive to say, uh, keep it to yourself, please. Um, you know, with this kind of, when we're hard facing metal on metal, it's uh, not as critical to get, you know, you'll see guys doing X patterns. I've done spider webs, all kinds of stuff. The reasoning behind that is it packs all the dirt and soil in between those X's. And uh, then as the bucket or whatever it is digs, it's scraping against the rest of that dirt that's caked in there and the hard face and, and saves the bucket from wear. But um, yeah, I'll show you guys some up close. It's just like I promised you, it's, it's nasty, ugly stuff, but uh, it is definitely essential in this industry. And uh, I want to thank you guys for watching. If you stay, stayed, uh, you know, informed, if I've helped you with anything, um, if you've learned one single thing, please subscribe and like uh, my channel and videos. Go to Instagram, Facebook, TikTok. It's at Juggernaut Weld Fab. Um, and yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Have a good one.